Have you ever wondered how the walls work in The Sims? Well, me neither. Until we had to build it ourselves. At first glance, everything seems pretty straightforward. You build a couple of walls and then by default, the game makes sure to hide the outside walls so they don't block your view of what's going on inside. But what happens if we make a zigzag shape like this? Okay, now our view is blocked by inside walls, but if we do it by adding a wall to the interior, now all of a sudden it is hidden. And if we make a hole inside our house, then it only hides the outside part of the walls. And look at this, if we remove a wall from this outside part, then all of a sudden the entire room turns outside. What is going on? Okay, so clearly the game has a sense of inside and outside walls. So the way it seems to work is that the game only hides the outside walls. Inside walls are only hidden if they're completely inside a room and used as room separation. Let's check these hypotheses. We can see when we are building walls that the game never hides anything. It is only when a room is completed that the walls start to auto-hide. Once it is established what the outside and the inside is, walls start to hide. And when we rotate around, we can indeed see that we can never see any outside walls. But look at this. We create two rooms and everything is fine. Okay, now we remove the walls of the smaller room, which then becomes the outside and we add a diagonal wall connecting the rooms again. So already this is wrong. These diagonal walls should be hidden. They're clearly outside walls. And what if we break down the rest of the interior walls and floors? Now we have a completely enclosed room where the game thinks everything is outside. So apparently we stumbled upon a bug in their algorithm. That means it needs this context of enclosed rooms to determine what are inside and outside walls. What I think is going wrong here are these tiles that are left in the room when we remove a wall. Because right now it hides the walls even though there is no enclosed room behind them. Removing these tiles fixes the state of the game and the exterior and interior walls are again well defined. So in conclusion, our hypothesis is false. There is something more going on under the hood. Let's test our second hypothesis as well. So, we're trying to find a situation where either inside walls are hidden when they're bordering the outside, or inside walls are not hidden when they are not bordering the outside. First, we make the entire plot a room. Next, we make a room inside this room. And finally, we remove the floors of the outside room. Now, we have a room where the inside walls are hidden, even though they're bordering a grassy outside. The game even treats the outer room as outside, as we cannot place any floors there. Clearly, it is currently in an ambiguous state. The inner room thinks it is inside, while the outer room thinks it's outside. Removing part of the outer wall fixes the ambiguous state and resolves the situation. Interestingly, the game does not seem consistent with hiding the inside walls as placing random disconnected sections of wall causes them all to be hidden as long as they're within the exterior walls. So once again, a part of the game thinks this area is inside while another part thinks it is outside. Apparently the game has some definition of interior and exterior walls in its code that can cause these ambiguous situations as both hypotheses do not hold true in all cases. Unfortunately, I can't give you the exact answer as to how this works under the hood. After all, I haven't worked on The Sims. What I can do, however, is give you the solution we created ourselves. So, here's how we did it. For every wall, we first determine which side of the wall is visible to the camera. Then we check the tile that lies on the other side of the wall. If that tile is marked as inside, the wall is blocking some interior space, so we hide it. Otherwise, we can just show the full wall. In The Sims, it seems like they're also hiding walls based on the inside and outside tiles. But before we can do that, we must determine which tiles are inside and which are outside. Again, I'm not sure how they determine the inside and outside tiles in The Sims, but I can show you how we did it. It basically works with a flood fill algorithm. 
What is a flood fill algorithm? Well, think of the paint bucket tool in paint, which fills up an area with a solid color. The entire area is filled up until it encounters a wall of some kind. When building a wall segment, we basically do a flood fill on either side of the wall segment. This means that for every tile, we add each neighboring tile which does not have a wall between it. Then, for all neighbors, we do the same, and then again, and again, until we have no tiles left to check anymore. If we reach the outside boundary of our grid, then that means the entire area is outside. However, if we haven't reached the outside, then that means our flood fill algorithm was blocked somewhere, and therefore must be completely surrounded by walls. If that happens, we can mark the entire area as inside. One thing we ran into is that this takes a lot of computing power for large grids. So to save some computing power, we added some optimization tricks to make this a lot faster. The first thing we did was to only run the algorithm for walls which connect at least two other walls. After all, we can only change a room from outside to inside or vice versa when the wall we place or remove connects or breaks a line of other walls. Therefore, a singular disconnected wall piece doesn't need to be checked, which saves us a lot of effort already. Next, when we're looking for the outside, we don't have to flood fill the entire outside area. For a big field, that is a lot of tiles to check. We can just stop as soon as we reach the edge of our grid. When building a new wall, the only meaningful change that can occur is the tiles go from outside to inside. After all, adding new walls cannot change any tiles that are now inside to outside. So, when building new walls, we can assume that as soon we reach the outside, we can stop checking, because any other tiles that we can find must be connected to the outside as well. When checking for an inside room, nothing really changes. If our flood fill can't find a way out, then all the tiles we checked get marked as inside. We also need to account for removing walls. This time, walls can only change tiles from inside to outside. For removing walls, we only need to do anything if one side of our wall is inside and the other is outside. After all, if both sides are outside already, there's nothing to change. And if both sides are inside, then our wall is placed inside a room and there will be no way that either side is connected to the outside. So if only one side is marked as inside and the other is marked as outside, then by removing the wall we are connecting that inside tile to the outside. That means that we only need to flood fill the inside tiles and mark them all as outside tiles. By using these optimization tricks, we can drastically cut down on the amount of tiles we need to check every time we build a wall segment. This means that even for big rooms, and big grids, the game can continue without any big stutters. Another interesting aspect of walls is the lighting, specifically when adding windows and doors to these walls. You may not think much of it, but when I'm placing a window on this wall over here, in the sims you can see that there is light flowing in from the outside. But when we do the same thing in our game by cutting a hole in the wall for the window, we can see that nothing happens. This is because in reality, the sims is lying to you. You see, by default, there is no such thing as light travel in games. The only way to really achieve that would be to use ray tracing to realistically simulate the light from the sun traveling through the window, bouncing around and lighting up the entire room. And The Sims was still a long way from achieving that in real time. But still, we can see that the window is making the room brighter. So what dark magic are they using to achieve the same effect? Well, it's not dark magic, it's actually light magic. <laughs> uh, Alright. All we need to do is fake the sunlight by adding a spotlight to the window facing from outside to inside. And bam! All of a sudden it looks like the sunlight from the outside is lighting up our room. Pretty cool if you ask me. If you look close enough, you will find that there are a surprising amount of hidden mechanisms in games. There's a lot more to the wall building system The Sims uses than meets the eye. By developing it ourselves, we encountered all of these interesting problems we had to solve for things you'd normally never think twice about as a user. If anything, it just goes to show what a massive amount of work goes into making games, most of which you may never even think about as a player. I hope you found this little insight interesting, because I certainly did. 
I would like to thank my top tier Patreon supporters Tainser and Neutron and all my other patrons for their support. Thank you so much. It's honestly still a bit unreal you're all helping to support the content I create. And of course, thank you viewer for your patience and for watching this video. I hope to see you all next time.